Okay, today we're going to talk about cleaning the trombone slide. And here's some of the materials that I use. There's uh, cleaning and lubricating involved. So what we have is cheesecloth, a cleaning rod, a soft cloth, like an old t-shirt style, not, a, um, not something like a towel, which can scratch the metal. A product called Brass Saver, which I really like. Um, some denatured alcohol. A funnel, I use this kind, and a few different products for uh, slide lubricating, which we'll talk about. So, the first thing I think you want to do is set up your cheesecloth on your cleaning rod. You take the square edge, well, it's not so square here, but you take the square edge of your cheesecloth and you fold it over. Hold it up like an upside down letter V, so the point of where I folded it is at the top. You take that point, insert it into the cleaning rod where you thread it through, give it a bit of a turn here, a bit of a twist, and then flip one flap over and keep turning so you have um, a nice thick bubble at the end. I can already tell this is going to be too thin because I want a really tight fit for getting the old creams and oils off of uh, the inside of the trombone slide. So I'm going to do it again with extra turning. So here we go again. We have um, cheesecloth, the edge at the top, folded like an upside down V. The point of that V, the apex there, goes through the through where you thread it, give it a turn or two so I can make it thicker. Take the flap from the bottom. <laughs> I know it's hard to see on camera. Uh, take a flap from the bottom and rotate a couple more times. And now I have a thicker bulb at the end. There are other products that people use to swab their slide. I've seen gun cleaners. I've seen, um, oh, I forgot who makes it. It might be Slido Mix makes um, a sheath that you can just put right over your cleaning rod. Um, either way, uh, this is how I learn. So here's how I do it with cheesecloth. First thing I like to do is send a brass saver through it, which is one of these black brushes on the end of a flexible white tube. I don't use the old school trombone snakes that uh, scratch up the inside of the horn and I'll send this right through here it takes a little bit of doing but it's pretty easy it's not hard to turn the corner with these like it used to be with those trombone snakes with the hard metal edges eventually that pops out the other end and these brass saver product was meant to work wet or dry and pulls out the gunk, most of it will be at the end. And there you go, it's wet, it's yucky. I saved some up for this video. If you have um, a removable lead pipe, you can take that out. And before you do what I just did, you can swab that out with a brass saver real quick. And I would do that. I don't use a cleaning rod in my lead pipe in any fashion because I don't want to change the taper inside here or the rounded very thin end. So just my brass saver on the lead pipe and set it aside somewhere safe. So we've got this swabbed out. That's with all the slide parts together uh, once with the brass saver. Next is my outer slide. When you're waiting a great place to hang these parts that you're not using is a doorknob if you don't have a, a dog or a toddler to bump into it while you're cleaning. So um, doorknobs are great for hanging slides to drain or dry. So starting with the outer slide, I've got the cleaning rod we set up earlier and I'm going to um, do something I don't do every slide cleaning but I'll do it this time. I'm going to put some denatured alcohol on the end of this. I used to use rubbing alcohol. It was recommended to me that I switch to denatured and I'm not sure technically exactly why, but I 
have followed that advice. And I've got it on the end here, letting some soak into the cleaning rod. And this part of it is only needed when my slide is really bad. <laughs> so I will swab without the alcohol, sometimes with just water on the end. But here we go. Hopefully I've got this end nice and thick. So it is a tough fit to get in here, and it should be. And the cheesecloth that I've cut is enough longer than my cleaning rod that it won't get lost in there, which I have seen that happen. And it's hard, really hard to get out, making sure my cleaning rod is wrapped all the way around here. So anyway, with a nice tight fit on the end, uh, this should be a little hard to move. And after you do it for a while, your slide tube actually gets hot. The bulb on the end helps protect from hitting the crook. I've got one there, and that came out. All sorts of pretty colors. And here's the other. The two tubes are warmer now. Okay. And then you don't have to do this right away, but pretty soon after, you probably want to rinse this because the alcohol is not good for the raw brass that's on the inside of this. So I prefer, uh, they don't make a sink big enough for crown oil. I guess they do. <laughs> so I use my basement slop sink here and my funnel to get some water in here to rinse off the alcohol. I go one. I don't want to leave the alcohol on that slide, so. I'll do two, and if you use warm water, don't get scalding hot with it. You can peel the peel the paint off your instrument, the lacquer. Okay, so now this has been cleaned on the inside with uh, the cleaning rod, and the brass saver went around the bottom crook when the slide parts were together. So this is fully clean, and I would hang this from a doorknob or just put it somewhere safe. Now we have the cleaning of this slide tube. Growing up, I was taught never to put a cleaning rod in here. You don't want to bend uh, these little circles out of round. You certainly, whether your slide parts are together or apart, never want to do it leaning on the ground and shoving the tube in because we don't want to bow our slide tubes, whether it's just the outer or the inner. We don't want to bow our slide tubes out by leaning on the ground and pressing in. But I have since learned I can hold this tube steady and send this down. The side that attaches to the bell, just to get it extra clean in there. And at the end, I'm being careful, not even careful if I go all the way through, that I pull it back gently and don't bend that metal. Okay, now when it comes to the other side, if your slide does not have a removable lead pipe, you do not come in from the top. I'll show you what to do there in a minute. This one has the lead pipe removed, so I'm not changing its direction or changing its taper by accident. I'm just getting the inside extra clean. And I'm always holding the tube that I'm sending this through. Okay. So if you have a slide where the lead pipe is not removable, like this one over here, I can do the inner tube where the mouthpiece goes, and there's a, no, there's a lead pipe stuck in here that I don't want to mess with. So you can come up from the bottom. If you've made your cleaning rod thin enough, your cloth on it, and as soon as you feel that lead pipe touch, you just stop right there and take it out. A little bit of swabbing there. When I had made this really thick for the outer slide, which is a wider tube, you know, lots of winding around. Then I switched to the inner slides, which are thinner tubes. I could unwind this a bit and make it thinner. So now I've got the uh, denatured alcohol inside my inner slide and inside my outer slide. But before I get to rinse that, I'm gonna take a soft rag. I like to use something like an old t-shirt. Uh, so again, something not scratchy like a towel and I'm gonna to use my denatured alcohol today 
for very thorough cleaning to get the um, old creams, old oils off of my inner slide. So here's that spot on the rag where the alcohol was and it's coming off pretty black. I don't like to leave the alcohol on the instrument so right after this I'm gonna wet part of the rag and take that off right away. Again I don't use the alcohol every cleaning it's just water or dry um, sometimes but when it's really bad when it's been a while uh, I do that. So now if I put the slide parts back together you may remember that I have not um, rinsed out the inner slide yet which had the alcohol on it. So I'll be doing that next. Oops, gotta switch tubes. So the uh, cleaning here is done. My lead pipe can go back into this slide. And now we have the lubricating, which is different. There's a lot of products here. There's the two bottle solution, Slidomix. I used to use that. There's the single bottle version of Slidomix. There's the single bottle product Yamaha Tramon slide lubricant and that's what I'm going to use now and then I'll show you creams um, when I do the Yamaha I just go down to say where seventh position is opened up where the slide gets a little wide put a little bit there sometimes a little at the top very little and you're done that slide really needed it I've been procrastinating making this video. <laughs> so if you have an older slide or if you have one that really works better with the cream, make sure that's the alcoholic spot, I'm going to get some old cream and oil off a different slide to show you um, using the cream. The cream is nice because it really does make some things feel better. And there's a couple of kinds here. There's super slick. This I just showed you, uh, I just brought this. I only have the tuning side grease here, but when there's red writing on it, I think it's red usually. It's, I wouldn't, don't use the tuning side grease on your hand slide, but uh, I just have this to show you a cup uh, from this company, super slick, that makes a nice cream. And also, Trombo Team. So I'm going to show you what I do when it comes to using the cream on a slide. Very, very little of the trombotine is on my finger and is going after I've cleaned off some old gunk from this slide. It's going past seventh position where the, even that little bit I put on my finger might be too much. Um, I might have to thin this out with a little water after and the extra from my hands I put up here and then I take it one tube at a time so I'm transferring the cream from my inner to my outer slide and for older slides or ones where you can still feel that they're not as good as they should be after using the Yamaha or Slider Mix products, the cream sort of hides, hides some potholes, I think. <laughs> and that's a way to do the cream. I did one tube at a time to transfer and be able to twist it around. And there you go. So that's that method. When you use the slide cream, the cream causes water to bead, and that's why we have this mister here. And the slides would ride on the beads of water if they were all four tubes perfectly straight. So it's a piece of equipment I didn't mention before. It's going to be a document 
with this uh, video so that you can just have that nearby for your slide cleaning. All right.